Hello, everybody. It's Sandra from the Funky Pickle Thrifter. I hope you are doing great today. Thanks for joining me. Today, we're going to have a look at some of my recent eBay sales. Sales have definitely been slow, probably not only because it's summer, but also because I had to take a little bit of time off. I travel for my job. I had to shut down my eBay store two different times, or it's not really shut down. It's like suspend or something. It's vacation mode, I believe it's called. And when you do stuff like that, eBay does penalize you. So your listings kind of show up a little bit lower in the rankings when people search for things. And coupled with that, when I was kind of getting ready to come back home a couple of times, I opened up my store again, but I put 10-day handling on things. And yeah, eBay doesn't like that. Anyhow, I managed to have about $2,100 worth of sales or so. I'm going to tell you where I bought the things and also what I paid. If I can remember, I do have a lot of things this time from auction lot, so it's kind of hard to put an exact dollar amount on them. I have a lot of jewelry today. If anybody watching this video bought anything from me, thank you kindly. I appreciate that so very, very much. Let me know what you think below. Subscribe to the channel if you want, and we will get started right now. I found this little purse somewhere. I can't really remember where, but I don't think I paid too much money for it. It's so super cool. I love the colors. I love pink and black together. I think it's interesting. Just a neat kind of boot purse. There's how big it is. Can't remember where I got it. Maybe my, my mom gave it to me or something. Don't remember, but I sold it for 30 I got these not too long ago at an antique mall kind of thing. I bought this whole lot of old horse jewelry pieces. I'm wondering if the horse heads right there were originally a belt that broke or somebody disassembled or something. There's some cute stuff here. Some little tack pins. There's a cowboy boot bolo. That's really nice too. That's a carousel horse. It looks like it's silver. I don't know if it is or it isn't, but I wanted to take a close-up picture to show that that little thing is broken on its back. It's little hook thing. I think I may have paid $15 for these, so not that great of a profit, but that's okay. Sold this whole lot for 22. Here's a fantastic lot of vintage earrings, vintage blue earrings. These are all clips. Some really pretty things here, especially those. Wow, look at those on the lower right. Fantastic. I was at the same picture twice. No one's a little bit closer, I guess. In nice condition, no missing stones. I didn't see a lot of scratches or anything like that. And there's the backs. So I find items like this in my travels. And I had these all in my blue jewelry uh, box. And I just decided that I was going to start lotting up earrings here and there and selling them. Put these up for $34 for all of them. Got it right away too. Hopefully a reseller bought these and they're going to make some profit on them. That's absolutely fine with me. Sold these for $35. Look at this pretty little Swarovski US flag pin. And this is very nicely done. I love how it looks sort of wavy. And there is the Swarovski swan. It looks like there's a copyright symbol beneath it, but that's the way it looks from the side or from the bottom, I guess I should say. Cute item. The stones are not prong set. They're glued in. I think I paid a dollar for this one at a yard sale, sold it for 39. Great profit. I think my older sister might have had this, and I think I've used this before. This is an old Mattel knitting machine. It's all plastic, and I think you feed yarn into it, and then you crank that little handle and it it just knits stuff. She's sort of doing it there on her lap. I don't know if you can see that. It's kind of nice that it came with that project book. Oh, there it is. This is more of a close-up. That's cool. And <laughs> look at her outfit. Look at all the stuff she made. Hey. And also that it had the little instruction booklet in there is nice. And there's the unit itself. Just a fun little thing. I definitely remember this. I just don't remember whose it is. I somehow remember the feel of, of winding that around. 
cool old item, got this at a yard sale for two, sold it for 20. I have sold these little reel-to-reel -reel tapes before, these little advertising ones. I actually got them in the same place, but years ago. So it's sort of strange. I found them in the same thrift store. This is for Tasty Freeze, and it's actually for Pepsi products. For um, Monster, whatever the Monster t-shirt, Monster mask, Monster cup, Monster Pepsi cup, Monster poster. Not exactly sure. Um, do they even have Tasty Freeze anymore? That I don't remember. I've heard of it, but I don't remember that. So this was obviously done by a an ad agency, and these were probably radio spots, I'm guessing, from 1973. Now, I bought a whole stack of these. I think I paid $5 for the stack. This is the first one I've sold. Sold it for $13. It's an interesting old item. I do like buying old electronics if they're small. This one is, and it's kind of groovy looking, right? No idea if this worked or not, which I wrote right in the condition they're used. It appears to be in very nice condition, cosmetically selling as is for parts as we don't know if it works is what the rest of that says. So I make sure I take some good photographs. Not too bad cosmetically. Hopefully somebody can bring this back to life or maybe just use it for parts. That's kind of a cool microphone. Just that alone. Paid a couple dollars for the city yard sale. Sold it for, I think, a best offer of 28 maybe even 26 But I had this up for bid for a long time. This was probably up for about a year. So very happy that one's going to be getting a new home. I bought a box full of video games. And also there is an Xbox 360 console in there for $20. This one was new and sealed. So I sold this one for 36 so not bad. Paid 20 for everything. I still have a lot more stuff to sell. There was also some controllers in there too. But this one was sealed. I remember playing this actually. I don't know if I ever played Guitar Hero 5. But some good stuff on there. The Killers, Kings of Leon, Megadeth, Iron Maiden, Elton John. <laughs> wow. John Bon Jovi, uh, bon Jovi Bob Dylan. That's quite a, an assortment there. Good stuff. New, still factory sealed, sold this one for 36 so I'm already in the money with a lot more stuff to sell. I think this 14 karat gold heart may have been part of a lot that my mother found. And if so, she didn't pay much for it because she just finds this stuff. <laughs> I don't know how, but I sold this for her for $76. This is solid gold, not plated, not filled. I mean, I don't know if it's solid all the way through. It might be hollow in there, but the point is that it's not gold plated is, is what is meant when you say solid gold. There's a Mark 14 carat, nice size, almost two grams. Beautiful little item, $76, great profit. Now this item I've had for a long time. This is a yard sale find from way back in the day. I probably got this in the early 2000s or the 90s or something. And this is solid 18 karat gold. I wasn't sure what that scene was. At first, I thought maybe it was Mary and Jesus, but it looks like a saint or something, doesn't it? Somebody praying to a saint. I'm not sure what that is. It's very pretty, however. And there's a size. And there's the mark, C18. I actually don't see that mark very much. I actually don't know if I've ever seen it before. The C stands for carat, and it is 18 carat. Uh, I did test it, you know, test it positive for. 18 karat gold. There it is from the side. I want to show that there's some sort of nice relief there. And almost a gram of 18 karat gold. Sold that one for 76, probably paid a dollar or something for it. Here's another piece of 14 karat gold. I love this lacy little heart. I love all that cut out. I think that's so sweet. So this is also solid 14 karat gold. Almost a full gram. Somebody really got a great price. I did put it up for bid, but only one person was interested. I love that. I think it's beautiful. Uh, I think this one was part of the haul from my mother. Sold it for her for 40 I probably bought this item six or seven years ago at a Goodwill when Goodwill still sold jewelry. They had two Irish sterling silver bracelets. I believe I paid $29.95 each for them. But the other one I sold for $76. This is a beautiful thing. 
that's a stock photo. I took that off the internet. But there's my picture. And it's from this website called My Irish Jeweler. It might be a brick and mortar too. I'm not sure. Maybe they just have a website. Isn't that pretty? There's the cloud of the harp and the shamrock. So nice. Never worn. Lovely. Paid 30 for it, but I had already made a lot of money on the other one that I bought the same day. But anyway, so this one for 50. I bought quite a lot of brass items by SPI at a garage sale over the fall, in the fall. Anyway, in the money, sold this hidden doorbell cover for 23. I bought a whole box of these vintage keychains from the 1970s. I think last summer, maybe even the summer before. I've been selling them for 10 bucks each. And I had, I don't know, maybe 70 of them or something. So they've been great little money makers. I put there that it's a pendant because you could just take that key ring off and put that on a chain. I had a lot of Zodiac ones. I had some cats. I had some butterflies. I have some religious ones. I think I only have a few more. These have been really a great money maker for me because... Uh, yeah, I think, did I already say this? I paid two or three dollars for the whole box full of them, maybe even four dollars, but great little profit. So this little dog for a 10. I bought these Alex and Ani bracelets at a Christmas bazaar at a little uh, church theft store that I like to go to. They had a little event. I paid five dollars for all of these and I thought they were interesting because some of these are the beaded ones. You don't really see these all the time. I had these on my page for a little while and I think I put $40 at best offer and I think I ended up selling them for maybe 28, maybe 30. I can't remember exactly, but paid five. So nice profit. Those are really pretty items in great condition too. I did this set as an auction thinking that it was probably going to go for a lot more money than this, but I only got one bid. Well, technically two bids, but nobody challenged them. So they got this whole set for $35. This looked so real. It's brand new in the package, sold on jtv.com. You can see right there, it says rhodium plated sterling silver diamond simulated ring necklace earrings jewelry set. Boy, did that look real. Good thing that ring didn't fit me because I, <laughs> I definitely would have kept it. I love that. Look at the heart. So high quality. That's a beautiful set. There it is on the back. Of course, all brand new, never worn. Great. I think I may have gotten this as part of a lot. So I'm not sure if I'm in the money or not yet. But like I said, I did do an auction on this and I started the bidding at $35, understanding that if nobody else bid and I only got one bid and it did sell for $35, I would be fine with that. So I am fine with that. Sold this for 35 bucks. Not bad. I love selling old trinket boxes. This one was one of the prettiest ones I've seen because of that top. That's such a beautiful 3D rose on top. Isn't that pretty enameling? I love the colors too. The pink, the purple, the green, the gold. Isn't that nice? There it is. I wanted to just make sure you could see the inside too. And there it is on the bottom. I think I paid a dollar for this at a yard sale, sold it for 17. I very, very rarely sell clothing or shoes on my eBay page because I don't know that much about clothes and I also don't enjoy it. I don't know why. I just really don't. I don't like measuring it or any of the stuff you have to do, but I will usually take a peek at them. And I was going through some clothes on a rack at a thrift store. And I found this sports jersey, which I know nothing about. I've never even heard of the Senators. It just looked interesting to me. It looked unusual. It was certainly high quality. I could feel it as I was going through the clothes. This was very thick. It was very heavy. Very, very, very nicely made. Excellent condition. But for that, I really should have put a dime or a quarter because that wasn't really that big of a deal. But there was some sort of dirt right there. I didn't attempt to remove it because I don't know how. Maybe it could be removed. Maybe it couldn't be. But it really wasn't that big of a deal. Right there in the condition, I wrote, uh, very nice, gently pre-owned condition with no major issues. Some small marks in the back. Please see pictures, I think is what the rest of that says. Pretty cool item. Now, I looked this up. This team is defunct. 
And I paid $5 for this in a thrift store, sold it for 88. And sitting right next to that jersey was this jersey, something else I've never heard of, the Buffalo Sabres. No idea. I think this is also hockey though, right? I don't know if this team is defunct too. I can't remember. Extra large, that's a good size. Oh yeah, this one was autographed. Look at that. To Steve, best wishes, your friend, what does it say, James Patrick. I had to try to figure out who number three was. James Patrick. Cool item, paid five for that one, sold it for 60. I have a source for these 4K ultra high def Blu-ray DVDs. Uh, I don't pay anything for these. And I uh, they weren't all the 4Ks. Some were, well, one of them was 3D. And I think a couple of these other ones aren't anything other than having a lenticular cover. So I thought they were kind of interesting. Also in nice shape, the discs were very clean, looked really shiny and glossy and wonderful. Didn't pay anything for this whole lot, sold it for 30. This is actually the second time that I've sold this bracelet. This is sterling silver. I think it's really cute. More than 12 grams of sterling. There it is on the wrist. It's a nice size. The animals are very nicely detailed. It's a cute thing. I think last time I had this, I also sold it for 35. The name brand is GSJ. Not sure who that is, but very, very cute sterling silver bracelet. I think I paid maybe two or three for this one. I think, I think it was a yard sale, but it may have been in a lot at an auction. Can't remember now. Anyway, sold it for 35. I got this item last summer at um an estate sale. I bought a lot of yarn. I still have some left, but this is complete profit because I made so much money on this yard sale. I think I'm up to $6,000, maybe $7,000. And some of this yarn was just outstanding. What does that say? Pure Peruvian cotton kettle dyed. I don't really know that much about yarn, but I knew this stuff was really beautiful and really special. Anyway, a lot of these two up, sold them for 10, pure profit. I knew this item was going to sell because I've sold it before. I bought this in a thrift store for $2. I think this is a QVC item, if I'm not mistaken. This is a great little set. It had the cologne, the body lotion, and also some greeting cards with envelopes. Kind of a cute little thing to have, all brand new. I think the price might have been a little bit low on this. This one did sell right away, but that's okay. I was really clear about it too. It says right there in the condition, box has lots of wear, items inside are unused. And then I put, I think I put new without box just so people would not think that, you know, even though it was new, like somebody might think they could give this away for a gift for somebody's birthday. But I wanted everybody to understand that the box wasn't great. So paid to sell this one for 40. Some people might remember this item. I got this at an antique mall. I think I may have spent $850 that day. Um, it was something like that for sure. So I have not recouped my money, but I knew this one was a real A-lister. First of all, it's so awesome. It's big, it's bright, it's just fantastic. Look at the expression on his face, his mustache, that bunch of balloons, it looks like he's being swept away by the wind. I took pictures from all the angles. Very, very small loss to the enamel. Really not bad. I find these uh, come up very, very seldomly on the internet for a bid at all. Very rare. It's from 1941. And there's a signature, Excesso Craft. That's a brand that sells very, very well for me. Great thing to look out for if you're a reseller, for sure. It's just so interesting. I think it's a lot of fun. So I think I maybe paid $30 for this, maybe $40 for it that day at the antique mall. Sold this one for $246.94. Cool item. Here's a lot of two Fruit of the Loom t-shirts. These are the one pocket ones. I got these as part of a lot. There was a lot of 
underwear and t-shirts and stuff like that from the 70s, 80s, 90s, and early 2000s. I'm not sure what date these are from, but people know. So the hope is when you buy something like this, that they pulled it off the market or not pulled it off the market, but that they don't make it anymore. And that maybe it has some value completely in the profit on that haul that I got that day from the thrift store. Sold these two for 15. How much do you love this sterling silver and amber ring? Isn't it pretty? Look at the sort of sun motif around that center. It's so pretty. This one I did get as part of an auction lot. I think I paid three or $400, maybe a little bit more for the lot. I think I got maybe eight rings, but I'm going to be keeping three of them for now anyway. So this was part of that lot, size nine. That's a nice big size for somebody to wear maybe on their index finger. Look at that shank. A very cool, very, very interesting piece. Can't really say what I, what I bought it for because it was part of a lot, but I sold this little ring for $27. This is another designer that I love to buy. This designer is called Original by Robert. It can also be pronounced Robert. I believe that is how it's supposed to be pronounced. But I usually just say Originals by Robert because that's what I do. Now, these guys, uh, there was... I believe two partners and they formed their company, I think in the 1950s in New York City. They weren't named Robert and they weren't from France, but they thought that Robert sounded very fancy and they named their company original by Robert. And that's what the signature looks like. You see how it almost looks like a painter's palette. Let me see if I can just get it up. Yeah, let me just move myself a little bit. See it right there, right underneath me. That's what it looks like. Fantastic condition. Look at the earrings too. It's always nice to have the set, right? Two of the stones had little flaws. It's kind of weird. I'll show it to you. You probably can't even notice it there, right? Do you even notice it there? I don't. But once you really start looking, ah, oh, look at how high that is. It's so cool. There's one of them. It's not a deadened stone or a darkened stone or a blackened stone. It's almost like it's more white or something. I don't know how to, to, to describe it really. And there's the other one. I put the arrow. Is it not as faceted or something? They might be replacement. I wasn't really sure what was going on, but you really couldn't tell. I don't think, but of course you, you know, you point it out and the earrings were perfect. Such a beautiful set. I believe I got these from kind of a jewelry store. I think I paid 150 that day. And I had another piece as part of that lot that I sold for $150. So that brings me up to over $300 in the money. Still have more pieces to sell from that haul too. Originals by Robert. It really is a great thing to look out for. They made beautiful stuff. I got this Rocky sweatshirt at that same thrift store where I got the two hockey jerseys, but it wasn't on the same day. This was another item. I could tell immediately as I was going through the clothing, I could feel it. I could feel the quality. A lot like when I'm looking for jewelry, there is just something sometimes that just sort of jumps out at you as being very, very nicely made. That's the case here. I had never heard of this name brand, Kith. No idea. Paid $5 for it, though, sold it for 100 This bracelet is incredibly beautiful. It looks so much like real gold and real diamonds. Very high quality. This is another Swarovski swan item. Yeah, we'll have a look at the swan. The condition's amazing. It is truly amazing. There's the swan. This one sold right away. I think the price might have been a little bit low on this, but that's okay. That's okay. I'm just happy to be flipping these things and moving them out of here. I do have a very small house with a small space where I work my eBay stuff. So yeah, I got to get the stuff moving. <laughs> I think I paid $2 for this one in a thrift store, sold it for $44. i will take it. Oh, I love this ring. This one didn't fit me. I definitely would have kept it. This is definitely antique sterling silver abalone. It's just so beautiful. It's very big. It's long. I'll show you here with the tape measure. It's like an inch and a half. Isn't that pretty? 
I love this. I think this one may have been from the 1920s. It's possible that it even was possibly from the 1910s or the 19 zeros. Beautiful, beautiful ring, part of an auction lot. Sold this one for 27. I believe I paid $5 for six pair of these compression socks by Copperfit. Now, the other ones were medium slash, oh no, yeah, large slash extra large, I think, which is kind of the more desirable size. So I think I got 25 for those or maybe 21. And I put these up for 15. So yeah, paid five for all six, sold these for 15, already in the money, pure profit. I think this necklace may have been part of an auction haul. I love old Venetian glass like this. Look at that. A very pretty Kelly green with then clear glass and foil. And then we have these little accent faux pearl spacers. Isn't that pretty? I love it. I love that necklace. A little bit of wear to the metal, not bad, not verdigris, not rust, just some normal age wear that you might expect to see on something this old. Isn't that pretty? Sold that one for 25. I love antique bangles like this. This is a hinged bangle. This is definitely old. This may be Victorian. It may also be Edwardian, which is early 1900s. I think Victorian is 1837 to 1901. I think it's something in that zone. A little bit hard today since it's not signed with a maker, but I would put it definitely late 1800s, early 1900s. Um, it's beautiful. And the best thing about it is the fact that that diamond sort of space right in front isn't engraved with anybody's initials. That's certainly was probably meant to be personalized, but it isn't. So that's really nice. I love the flowers too. I love the design on the back. Isn't that interesting? Really a pretty piece. Gold filled. Don't know if I already said that. Got this as part of an auction lot. Not sure if I'm in the money yet on that lot, but I sold this bracelet for 75. I've been collecting records my whole life. I'm actually trying to sell them. I've been selling them at an auction by lots. I so far have sold my Elvis records and my Beatles records. And then I also sold some heavy metal records too. I sold all my Kiss records and so on. I'm trying to kind of get rid of them. But this one I found at a yard sale. I couldn't resist it because it just seemed interesting. I had, I had no idea who the high windows are. I don't know who that is. Clearly, that's not a an American pressing. It seemed interesting. You could certainly tell her it's from the 60s by the photograph. Just kind of a neat item. Look, she has her little mini dress on, <laughs> pigtails. The vinyl was nice and glossy, near mint. The cover had a little bit of mild handling where nothing bad. Paid a dollar for that one at a yard sale. Never heard of it. Just thought it looked kind of freaky. Sold it for 35 some people may remember this from a recent haul. I got this in a thrift store. I can't remember now if I paid $2 or I paid $4. One thing was clear when I looked at it, that's real inlaid stuff. And also that's sterling silver. There was no doubt about that. I've sold bolos before. I like selling them. I think they're pretty cool. There it is from the back. And there's where it says sterling. It was sort of hidden underneath that leather braided part so clearly marked tested sterling also i would also think these end caps are sterling too i would assume but i don't think i mentioned that so either paid two or four sold it for 40 pretty item isn't this a pretty old pin i love the jewel tone colors on this the emerald green the sapphire blue the ruby red had some nice height very, very pretty cabochon stones. I think this may have been part of an auction lot. Not exactly sure, but sold it for 11. I bought this Judith Jack brooch at kind of an antique jewelry store kind of place. I think I paid maybe 22 for it or 25. I wore it for a while. I did enjoy it. It's clearly marked sterling. And I'm going to show you the Judith Jack signature too, so you can recognize it. It was a nice big piece too. Look at that, three inches. Let's see if we can zoom in a bit. 
hopefully you can see it right there. It kind of looks like a diamond or two triangles together. That's the Judith Jack little mark. Cute item. I think I paid 25 for it, but I did get a lot of enjoyment out of it. Sold it for 34 This item I know was bought by a friend of my YouTube channel. So thank you so much for that. I appreciate it. How cute is this little item? That is sterling silver. It's either a charm or it certainly could be used as a little pendant as far as I'm concerned. It's a very cute little stoplight. I think it's four-sided. Really lovely, colorful stones in there too. I believe I got this in a thrift store. I think I paid $2 for it, sold it for $20. Here's the other SPI brass item I sold this week. People do collect lighthouses. And I think this is very cool. Wouldn't that be a cool doorbell cover? I like it. I think it's interesting. I had this up for 23. I took a best offer. Somebody sent me an offer. I don't know, $16, $18, something like that. And I gladly sold it to them. Totally in the money on this. So it's pure profit. I believe I got this J. King item at an estate sale where I bought a lot of J. King things, a lot of Desert Rose trading and other items as well. They had a lot of QVC and HSN stuff, and I kind of got there pretty early too. There were a few people looking at the jewelry, and I said, do you have any Joan River stuff by any chance? And she said, somebody came and bought it all, but darn it. But I was very happy to get all the J. King stuff and a lot of other great stuff too. I'm definitely in the money on that haul. I believe I paid twelve hundred for the whole the whole haul. I think I think I might be a thousand dollars in the profit so far. I'm still selling the pieces. I love those pastel colors. Isn't that pretty? Really pretty. Look at that. Nice that it also came with the earrings. Brand new in the box. The woman said that her mother just loved watching TV and getting things in the mail and that she never wore any of the things. She only collected them and I guess looked at them. And the profit completely sold that set for 50. I've had this little piece of 14 karat gold for a long time. This is an Italian horn. It's also called a cornudo. And this was meant to be worn as an amulet to keep away the evil eye, I think. I think I paid a dollar for this at a yard sale. And can you see there's like a little tiny ding underneath kind of where that curve is? I think that's very noticeable. Put good condition with some handling wear, but then once I sold it, I, I don't know, I just got weird about it. So I sent the guy a thing or or the woman a thing. And I said, there is a little bit of a ding on it. I just want to tell you that if you get it and you're unhappy, you're welcome to return it to me for a full refund. But they were very happy with it. So I was happy about that. Paid a dollar, sold it for 40. This purse is absolutely outstanding. I got this as part of a jewelry lot at an auction. It was sitting right on top. It was really the biggest reason I wanted the jewelry lot, but I think I'm already in the money on all the jewelry. I guess those are lilies or something. This seems like it's old. I think it's beautiful. Too bad that's not real silver, right? I think that was velvet lined inside. I could be wrong about that. But it's really nice. You see how it's not all dented and stuff? What an awesome, awesome purse. Pure profit, because I already made money on the jewelry from that lot. Sold this one for 50 bucks. I got this set of copper owl mugs at a thrift store for $5. I was very interested in them because A, they were copper. B, they had the owl motif. And then C, they're Pier 1. And D, I guess they're brand new with the tags. So there's that. Now, Pier 1, I believe, is closed. I don't know if they still have an online presence, but I think all the brick and mortars are closed. They, at least they're closed by me. And I really loved that store. So these are Moscow Mule cups, and I just had one the other night, and I really decided I don't like them. I don't know. They taste like cleaning fluid or something to me. Not that I've ever tasted cleaning fluid, but you know what I mean. I think they're made with birch beer or something, right? And vodka? I don't remember. I'm not sure, but I'm not going to drink them anymore. Oh, there it is. 
pour vodka and lime juice into a mug, add ice cubes and ginger beer. That's right. And I do like ginger beer. I don't know why I don't like them, but anyhow, really cute set. Paid $5 for all four. Sold them right away too for 50. I love this bracelet. I believe this was part of a lot. And it is outstanding. Look at those giant charms. They look like ancient coins. It was clearly signed Napier. I love Napier jewelry. I love selling Napier jewelry. This sold right away too. And I took a best offer. Price might be a little bit light, but that's okay. That's absolutely fine. It's about eight inches long or so. It's a cool one. I did try to find one like it and I could only find one sort of like it. I didn't find this exact one. Interesting piece. I can't remember what I accepted as a best offer, possibly 46 or something like that. I think it's part of an auction lot. So I probably didn't make my money back yet, but working on it. Cool bracelet. Okay. I want to hang out with the person who bought this from me. I would never have sold this item ever because I love it, but I have another one. So I kept one and I sold one. How fun is that? I bought this on Etsy probably 10 years ago or so. I don't think you can find them anymore, though. I did try to look before I put this item up. I think I may have paid 45 for this or maybe even 55 for it. It's just so much fun. Now, whoever sold this and made it clearly worked in a dental lab. That is clearly like the real deal denture stuff. <laughs> I love mine. I actually wear it from time to time and people think it's hilarious. I think it's hilarious, but I understand also that there are people who will think it's absolutely vile and disgusting, but I love it. And so did one of my customers clearly sold this very, very cool ring. What do you think? Good or gross? I love it. Sold it for 75 bucks. I got three of these Moon Glow Thermoset necklaces by Talbots at, I think, um, I think it was a yard sale kind of thing. That's what I think. I think the guy was like a kind of a dealer, but that's where I bought this. So they still do make Moon Glow Thermoset. That is an old technology, but they still do make it, as you can see right here. And this wasn't restrung or anything because I have three of them. And it's not the first time that I've seen new Moon Glow Thermoset. This is gorgeous. I love it. I love the length of it. There's the Talbot's hang tag. If you see it now, you know what, what it is. I was just trying to show you, uh, show how big the beads were. That's not really a great photograph. But that one is, it's really very, very fun to look at because as you turn the beads and they play a little bit in the light, they just look like they're glowing. It's just beautiful. You may also notice there are some accents there. See the rhinestones? Beautiful necklace. I do have three of them. This is the first one I sold. I think I paid $2 each for them. Sold this one for $25. Here's another little lot of yarn. This is mohair and angora. I lotted these all together. Sold them for $30. I love these colors. I love that teal blue. And there's also a lovely royal blue right there. Nice soft rose. A lot of those together, sold those for 30, pure profit. I bought this Whiting and Davis item as part of a jewelry lot from an auction recently too. I have a silver one also. It's kind of amazing that it's brand new and never it's never been used and it comes in the original box. I have a silver one also, silver tone, that's up for bid right now on my eBay page too. And I did get some cool jewelry in that lot, but the reason that I wanted the lot for sure was because I knew that I could make a good profit on both of those belts. This is the first one I've sold from the two that I have, sold it for 50. This isn't the first time I found or sold a deck of tarot cards. One time I found a bunch and I made an awful lot of money. They were very, very rare ones. Now this one, somebody kept reaching out to me from Australia and they really, really wanted these cards. It's just a miniature deck. And I said, you know what? I don't sell internationally at this time. I'm sorry, but I can't do it. So they wrote to me a few more times. And in the meanwhile, 
nobody else bought them. And then, of course, as you know, if you're an eBay seller, eBay just made it so that everybody has to sell internationally. And it has, it is quite easy. You sell it, I mean, you ship it rather to one of their hubs and then eBay handles it. But the reason that we don't sell internationally, we used to. I actually have sold two or three Blythe dolls to customers in Japan. I've also sold to England before. Well, I've, sold, I've actually sold in many countries in the past, but I got burned pretty badly on a rare record that was maybe a $500 record by this singer, Kim Weston. It was on the Tamla label, which is a subsidiary of Motown. I believe it was either a test pressing or a promo. And I shipped it to somebody in France and he claimed that it was broken. Hmm. And I didn't want to pay to ship it back because that would have cost a lot. He sent me a picture of it broken. I'm not sure if that was my record. And it really upset me um, because I really did kind of want him to ship it back, but I didn't want to pay the 30 bucks or or whatever it was. So that's the reason. Uh, I also had some other experience like that. And I, anyway, it just kind of turned me off of shipping internationally. So that's the reason that we haven't done it for many, many years. But now we do because we have to. And eBay really has made it very, very easy. So this person who was so much wanted these cars from Australia did finally end up getting them. So I hope they love them. I got these for a dollar at an estate sale. I think they were a dollar, sold them for 25. Here's the last item for today. Some people might remember I did buy a Leah Stein collection from a woman and I'm a private collector. I'm going to put the link below in the description box if I can remember if anybody's interested in taking a look at the beautiful, beautiful Leah Stein brooches I have. Now, I have been selling some of them. I am going to be keeping a few of them, but I am kind of wearing them and enjoying them and then selling them off little by little. I believe I paid $800 maybe for the collection, something like that. And I definitely already made all my money back and a big profit, and I have many of them left. Now, this little teapot is one of the rarer items. It's really cute. I think I couldn't even find another one like this, too. So put it up, did it, buy it now for $100 and got it. Cute item, right? Well, that's it for this time around. I'd like to thank you kindly for coming to my video today, everybody. I appreciate you being here. I hope if you're a reseller, this helps you out and you can find similar items. I hope you maybe learned a little bit about some of the name brands, jewelry-wise, at least to look out for. Happy eBaying, everybody. I hope to catch you on the next one. All right, cheers.